Hi, I'm Jeff Haynes with Tech Bargains, and today we're bringing you a video review of the Amazon Kindle Fire. Apple's iPad 2 has had a number of challenges from tablet manufacturers, but it probably never expected to get a challenge directly from the world's largest e-retailer. When Amazon decided to announce the Kindle Fire, it was taking a claim in the highly competitive tablet market. But will this Kindle Fire actually set consumers' interest ablaze, or will it leave them feeling a little bit cold? The Kindle Fire is powered by a dual-core TI OMAP processor running at 1 GHz with 512 megabytes of RAM. It runs a modified version of Android 2.3, customized with Amazon's own user interface, and displays apps, movies, and other content on a 7-inch multi-touch display that has a native resolution of 1024 by 600 at 169 pixels per inch. It comes with one micro-B USB 2.0 port, as well as a 3.5mm stereo audio jack with top-mounted stereo speakers. The Kindle comes with Amazon's Silk Web Browser for web pages, as well as Amazon Cloud Storage to supplement the 8GB of internal storage on the device. Running out the system is Wi-Fi support, Android app support, and Amazon's WhisperSync technology and multiple content format support. We were immediately struck by the design aesthetics of the Fire, which showed that Amazon crafted it to stand out from other tablets on store shelves. The system is incredibly light at only 14.6 ounces, and its slim profile ensures the device fits comfortably in the palm of your hand without feeling burdensome. In fact, we noticed whenever we used the Fire, plenty of people would come by just to get a look, clearly making it resonate with visual appeal. We found the multi-touch display to be a vibrant and sharp screen, which made use of the device an enjoyable experience whether we were playing games, watching TV shows and movies, or reading books and magazines. This is particularly true when it comes to children's books and apps, which leapt off the screen thanks to the bright colors displayed on it. Plus, parents can feel okay with putting this in the hands of kids that can be a little destructive with their products, since the durable Gorilla Glass scratch-resistant display can protect the fire from dings and knocks, or any desire to etch their name into the screen. Apart from the visual look of the Fire, we were also struck by the speed and performance of it, which was surprisingly fast. We noticed that Amazon's Silk Browser was incredibly quick when it came to pulling up websites, rendering them almost immediately. In fact, it was a great selling point that the Fire was able to pull up pages slightly faster than some of the computers we tested it against. Much of this was due to Amazon's Web Services Cloud, which uses Amazon's considerable server farms and the Fire's persistent connection to the cloud, among other factors, to deliver pages in milliseconds. The Fire also proved some of its tablet chops by consolidating multiple email accounts into a solitary inbox, while also accessing new messages with minimal lag thanks to the Kindle Fire email app proving that some key tablet features didn't fall by the wayside. The Fire also comes with a notable set of extras. You get one month trial membership to Amazon Prime, which provides fast two-day shipping for millions of Amazon's products, as well as instant access to more than 100,000 movies and TV shows. Also, the Kindle Fire gives access to the Kindle Lending Library, allowing users to borrow a book from Amazon's servers as long as they want without paying fees or having due dates. This gives access to more than 5,000 books, including more than 100 current and former New York Times bestsellers. The library's extended try-before-you-buy concept is laudable, and including a free taste of Amazon Prime is a shrewd tactic by the e-tailer to get consumers to buy more products from them, which is something other tablet manufacturers can't match. We found it notable that the Fire came with some useful apps pre-installed, like QuickOffice, ESPN Score Center, Pandora, and more. While there are no password protections to prevent an over-enthusiastic child from buying and fully downloading tons of apps, we like the simplicity of the App Store, which allowed purchases of free and paid apps with the touch of a finger. The company's dedication to giving away a paid app for free every day for Android devices completely extends to the Kindle Fire and makes it much easier for some users to test out a variety of apps on the Fire, further promoting it as a tablet alternative. A separate element that initially raised a red flag was the storage of the Kindle Fire. Amazon provides 8 gigabytes of internal storage for the device, which it further qualifies as approximately 6 gigabytes available for user content. According to the company, that lets you store 80 apps along with either 10 movies, 800 songs, or 6,000 books. Compared to other tablets, the limited space is rather low, and most people would consider it to be a pretty large disadvantage. But we actually disagreed with this sentiment because Amazon provided a number of features to make that size issue basically fade away. 
The first is the inclusion of Amazon's cloud content storage, which means that any and all Amazon content, such as downloaded apps, movies, TV shows, songs, and books, are automatically stored for free in the company's cloud for immediate streaming or download. Limited physical space isn't much of a problem when you can quickly and seamlessly restore any purchased content in seconds. The second element is the inclusion of the WhisperSync technology, which is an incredibly robust way to enjoy your content. Not only does it bookmark the page you're on, as well as any notes or your file library as a whole, but WhisperSync on the fire will also save where you paused a movie or a TV show, which can be picked up at the exact same spot on an external device or returned to at any later time. This also extends to items that are deleted and re-downloaded. Of course, we were concerned about the battery life of the tablet, just like any other slates on the market. Amazon claimed about eight hours of battery life of continual reading or seven and a half hours of video playback. We found we could stretch the system's charge out to a couple of days if we didn't try to burn through the battery in one long sitting. And recharging of the device only took about four hours, which is comparable to that of an iPad. Finally, and most obviously, is the price. Amazon came out swinging and clearly hit on something with the $199 price point. That seriously undercuts many of the devices on the market, and users get quite a number of bells and whistles for that inexpensive amount, making it an incredible value. So it would appear that the fire burns brightly, but is there anything that turns down its heat? Well, there are some minor issues that stood out for their annoyance factor. For example, the power button of the device is on the bottom of the tablet, meaning that showing other friends what you're watching or reading with the fire in portrait mode could accidentally result in turning the tablet off. We weren't really thrilled by the number of times you ran into this design choice. You're also going to give up some features that are standard on some tablets. For one thing, there's no way to customize the Fire's menu or how the content is displayed, which is a little disappointing. Similarly, there's no expandable memory or 3G wireless connectivity, but it's clear that Amazon eliminated these elements to focus on a cheaper, easier to produce device. Amazon has claimed that the Kindle Fire has sold millions since it was launched a few weeks ago, and we can definitely see why. The amazing Silk browser, the impeccable screen quality, the access to cloud content wherever you happen to be, and the very low cost makes it a very attractive device for consumers interested in getting a tablet. It's not a perfect device, but its flaws are minimal at best. It may be a little bit early to call, but the Kindle Fire could put some serious heat on Apple's iPad, especially where the cost of a tablet is concerned. All puns aside, we decided to give the Kindle Fire a 4.5 out of 5. For more news, reviews, coupons, and deals, be sure to check out techbargains.com, follow us on Twitter at techbargains, or check out our Facebook page.